In a world surrounded by data tracking lab rats, super rich billionaires who are just too lazy to come out with anything new, and Chinese men who want to hold the business world by the throat, it's kind of overwhelming knowing which VR headset to buy. You have the crowned king of standalone VR, the MetaQuest 2, the Gabe Newell Special, the Valve Index, and the not so popular HTC lineup. I'll be mentioning a few other headsets in this video, but since there's a lot of headsets to choose from, I'll be giving a pros and cons of each headset so you know the full extent of what you're buying. No matter what I say about a headset you own or are thinking of owning, if you're happy with it, then don't let me persuade you otherwise. I'm going to gloss over a few important aspects like FOV and resolution. Although they are important, I just kind of want to dumb it down for this video, if, if you get what I mean. Just because I know what it means and you know what it means, not everyone is looking super in-depth into those specific categories. This video might just be someone who wants a VR headset that isn't a Quest 2 and doesn't really care about technical terms. If you'd like to chat with me or others interested in VR, join the Discord server below. I'm getting this one out of the way right now since it's obviously the most popular. The Meta slash Oculus Quest 2 is undoubtedly the unruly dictator of standalone VR. Being able to play VR without being connected to a PC or the use of your phone is what I'd imagine Google had their wet dream about a few years ago. It truly does bring ease of use to virtual reality that we just haven't seen before. But of course, the negative being its owned by everyone's favorite, Jay Norris. Depending on how you feel about Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg, you might not care about the data tracking practice of Facebook like I do, but it's also good to be mindful of what you're getting yourself into. Personally, paying a pretty cheap price for a VR headset for the trade-off of companies trying to sell me stuff doesn't really affect me, so I don't mind. Of course, you might be different with that opinion. An honorable mention for standalone VR is the Pico Neo 3 if you're outside the states, but that might change here soon. Of course, it's owned by ByteDance, who also owns 16-year-olds dancing to sicko mode by Travis Scott. <laughs> So it's really just a battle of which company you're okay with seeing that special folder in the unknown sources titled Homework. To summarize, the pros of the Quest 2 is that you can play without a PC, without attaching your phone, and it's a cheap price. Of course, your data is tracked and sold to advertisers, and you're at the hands of Facebook and need that account to sign in. And if you buy a game on Quest, you're not guaranteed to get it on the Oculus PC app. On the complete opposite side of the spectrum of VR, the Valve Index is some degree the unruly god of PC VR. Yeah, we have the headsets like the Vario Aero, and I'll be talking about the Reverb G2 and HTC headsets. Give me a second. But the Valve Index turns all the right, uh, valves. You can adjust the back strap, the supporting strap, how close the lenses sit from your face, where the audio blesses your ears from, and above all has insanely comfortable controllers that are still the standard many people use even with other headsets. A thousand dollars for a VR headset is a lot. When I told my dad I bought one and its price, he looked like his soul just got ripped out of his body. But the price isn't the biggest problem. Despite how many times I've made a three part series on why you shouldn't buy one, the problems will always be there. The headset cable being in its position the way that it is makes me visibly cringe anytime I try to put the headset on. Let, let, let's just put the cable right here where the headset bends every time you put it on. I hear about one of these cables dying I'm going to Fortnite dance on top of the Valve Index's grave. When I had a Quest 2, I would just lift up the back head strap, line up my eyes, and put the strap back down. Now I'm doing a balancing act of trying to not crunch the cable from the headset itself while also trying to strap what is basically magic to my forehead. There have even been reported cases of cables breaking, knobs snapping off, displays dying, headphones no longer working, and I could literally just go on. Don't get me wrong, it's an enthusiast device so the cost isn't for the average guy who just likes the occasional flashing lights and karate moves, but for people who are serious about VR. I know I made this headset sound like a nightmare, but Valve did partner with iFixit to give us parts if we really needed them. Again to summarize, the Valve Index has amazing comfortability, many adjustments for your face, eyes, and hands, and overall is a great experience while owning one, and it's the first VR headset you can actually obtain parts for if things go wrong. Although its cable borderline deteriorates while using the headset, and overall QA issues hold this headset back. Also, without a standalone option, you have to be connected to a PC, but I imagine if you're watching this video, you probably already knew that. Before we continue, welcome back to Viewy's Hot Gamer Facts. In 2015, a woman named Carrie set the Guinness Book of World Records for longest gaming session ever by playing Just Dance for 138 hours. That's about five days straight of dancing. Now that's a hot gamer fact. I'm going to be mostly talking about the HTC Cosmos series, while they're generally under the price of the Valve Index, 
Many of HTC's new headsets are more focused on the business end rather than gaming. The HTC Vive Cosmos is an inside-out tracked headset, with a head strap designed to be taken on or off to see what needs to happen around you. Whether it's just to take a sip of water or to develop mods for Half-Life Alex, I wouldn't be the first to say it's not exactly the perfect head strap. While the Cosmos has its own problems that get highlighted more in depth from something like Thrill Seeker's video, problem here is that the Cosmos launched with multiple fundamental issues. The Cosmos is more gaming oriented from HTC since they drove down that business lane. The Cosmos starts at 750 even today, and while it's a decent price just under the index but over the Quest 2, the inside out tracking is borderline unusable. If you get too close with the controllers to your face, you will lose tracking. Summarizing, it's poor tracking, somewhat uncomfortable head strap, and company that has been absent from the majority of gaming makes this headset not worth its money. Alright, this one, I'm going to try and not give my personal opinion of HP since I've said it before in videos, but the HP Reverb G2 does have its place in VR. It's been most common for racing sims and somewhat professional use, but overall it's not a bad start into Windows Mixed Reality. It does feature minimal screen door effect and what I've heard to be the best display on any reasonably priced headset, and audio rips straight from the index. Although it doesn't have the greatest tracking due to its inside out method not covering the top or the full length sides of the headset, and of course, HP is a super cheap when it comes to structure in their devices. I've had a family friend text me asking me to fix their laptop before, and as I was fixing it, I had a screw go through the front plastic, and on a separate occasion, the motherboard had shorted itself and left a burn mark on the motherboard itself. But what I might hear you say is, well, I'm not going to be opening up my headset, but even then, it's still just not a great company. This story might not have a ton of relevance when it comes to VR, but here it goes. I'd say around August last year, I was looking for a new laptop to start college with. I was using a Lenovo ThinkPad T440, and while it was holding up through high school, it was definitely showing its age. So I went to Best Buy, not the best place I know, and I looked at laptops. At this point, the whole screw through plastic thing had already happened, but I decided to give HP another shot. I picked up some random HP laptop I don't even remember the model name for, for around $500. I took it home, set it up, opened up Task Manager, and was using 50% of my processing power on the desktop. I took it back that same day. The Reverb G2 has an impressive display, pretty much the only WMR headset you can still buy, and it's steel for its price if you're wanting a racing rig. But on the downside, don't buy HP products. Also the tracking is kinda bad. Wait, didn't I already talk about the Quest 2? That's right, we're talking about it twice, only because some people might buy a Quest 2 now with the idea that they'll get a PC eventually to use it with. While it might be the best headset for standalone, the Quest 2 doubles as a PC VR headset as well. There are a few methods of doing this, whether it's through a link cable or virtual desktop or AirLink. You can play games like Boneworks or Half-Life Alex with this headset. But if you don't have the best internet, you might not be able to stream from your PC, and in my case, I couldn't use AirLink at all since I don't have a 5GHz router. Despite that, the link cable isn't the best option either, I've said this before, but it's a data connection to the headset, not a video signal. So once you are exceeding that transfer speed of the USB-C cable, you're not having a great time in VR. Now, you might say that you can open the Oculus debug menu and fix some settings, and you're never forced to do that with a fully dedicated PC VR headset. When you connect through the link cable, you cross the line of easy to use to knowing which question to Google to fix your problem. The Quest 2 is amazing for what it does, but don't expect the same performance as PC VR headsets from this headset. I'm not even going to give positives on this one. Don't buy cardboard, don't buy any phone VR, it's never great, and if you've used one in the past, please try a Quest 2 before just completely ditching VR. Don't, do not use phone VR. Some honorable mentions I figured I'd tell you since they're at least past the point of either popularity or not in certain countries. Again, the Pico Neo 3 is a standalone Quest 2 competitor that doesn't need a PC, but it's only limited to those with free healthcare. The Vario Aero, while its displays are fantastic and it's backed by a super intelligent company, it's $2,000 and doesn't come with any controllers or base stations. So if you have the money, I would recommend the headset. I also didn't mention any of the Pimax headsets since their super wide FOV has been known to not work with some games. Purchasing one off their website also gives me a panic attack looking at it, so I just didn't mention it. Each headset has its own pros and cons, and again, I did try to sum it up for those who don't know terms like FOV and why resolution matters. I know why they matter, you might know why they matter, not everyone does. 
thank you all for watching we're fastly approaching 700 subs honestly by the time this video comes out we might as well just be at uh, at 700 subs uh a thousand is literally around the corner again thank you all for watching join the discord down below and i will see you all next week This is something else.